We are, of course, all eagerly awaiting our Lord and Saviour HBM2 memory. However, despite us all eagerly awaiting the first gaming solutions equipped with this new technology, this pursuit for higher bandwidth has not ceased. Now, as great as HBM is, it does, of course, have problems. Hardly surprising, everything made by man has some sort of problem. It is not exactly cheap to manufacture, it requires a lot of effort on the engineering side, and also requires collaboration with third party companies, who of course are responsible for putting everything together on the interposer. So obviously, you know, as great as new technology that improves things as much as HBM and HBM2 does, cheaper options are always welcome with open arms, as long as they keep their products competitive. Now, of course, NVIDIA's answer to this problem was GDDR5X in the Pascal series, at least the high-end variation of that series. But, it seems that despite the entry of HBM, we have not seen the last of GDDR technology, as GDDR6 is being developed simultaneously with GDDR5X and will apparently enter the graphics market soon and will apparently be saying bye-bye to GDR5 somewhere by the year 2020. So not exactly just around the corner, but they are still working on it and will come alongside with GDDR5X and as I said, basically mean that the days of GDDR5 vanilla are numbered. So what does GDDR6 actually bring to the table, I hear you ask? Well, it will increase the bandwidth per pin up to 16 gigabytes a second, which is 10 times faster than GDDR3. And of course, at the moment, GDDR5X offer 10 gigabytes a second per pin. So say for example, you were to put something like this on a high-end card, like for example, the 1080, you would actually get a pretty tasty 512 gigabytes a second of bandwidth, which is actually matching that of the R9 Fury X. Now, while Micron have yet to give us a release date for GDDR6, it is expected to hit the market by the end of the year. So it is coming out sooner than 2020, we're just not expecting it to replace the current technology until, you know, we've seen its impact, it's implemented in cards, yada 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 yada, you get my point. They have, however, su supplied some very useful slides, which if you feast your eyes on the screen right about now, you will see just a little snippet of what we can expect from GDDR5X and GDDR6. Now, of course, before anyone says it, it is obviously pretty obvious that, yeah, I know that sentence was a bit mangled, but stick with me, that HBM2 will become more cheaper for developers and everybody else to actually implement into the cards in the future. It's just obviously for the moment it is fairly expensive, so perhaps by the time GDDR5, sorry, GDDR6 arrives and finally starts to make an impact, you know, maybe the cost of HBM2 will be brought down enough to the point where, hey, it doesn't matter as much, or it's just going to be a competitor to HBM2. And of course, it could be a race between the two to see which one is best. And of course, DDR6, as much as it improves on 5 and 5X, is still obviously not matching the improvements that HBM2 brings to the table. The fact that it's much cheaper, okay, cool, awesome, not going to disparage you for trying to bring a cheaper solution to the market there, Micron. Just pointing out that when you're looking at in terms of raw improvements brought to the table, HBM2 trounces this pretty steadily and heftily from what I can see. But of course, for those looking to make a cheaper card, not only to produce, but of course to purchase and put in the hands of consumers, GDDR6 might be where it's at to those trying to offer a bit more memory and of course improvements to that memory. As always though, thank you very much for watching. I'd love to hear some thoughts and opinions from those of you watching. As always, thank you for your support. It really does make a huge difference and means a great deal to both of us so thank you again for watching and i'll see you next time